My name is Peter Björk, as it's supposed to be pronounced in Swedish. Anyone else from Sweden? Yes. Oh, wow, a lot of friendlies. Whew. I count on you covering my back during this session then. Um, this is my first session for this year, so uh, please be gentle. I'll have a, I, I think I have a total of four sessions, so by the end of the week I will be uh, warmed up. Uh, but hopefully this will not be too bad. Today, uh, so what I do, I work at VMware. I'm the uh, identity manager uh, and unified access gateway expert, technical uh, expert for the EMEA region, so Europe, Middle East, and Africa. Uh, so we will discuss, and uh, one of my big interests is how do we provide great user experience and still maintain security. Um, mostly regarding accessing applications, but also to a certain degree data. So that is the topic of this, uh, this talk. Disclaimer, you will see this a couple of times this week. We just have to show it. I may, I will try not to, but if I happen to talk about future uh, roadmap things, it's not something you can reference in a purchase order or something like that. Uh, because uh, roadmaps, as you may know, is a moving target. So what we are planning to do for next year may change. This is the view I have, and this is a very old slide, uh, but I've been using it for at least five years because I simply, it represents the view I have of the IT market today. We have the client server era, which I refer to as legacy. Legacy do not necessarily mean it's bad. It just means it has been around for a while. Uh, it's our heritage. On the client server era side of the bridge, you have things like domain joined. You have security built around network location. Uh, you are managing individual devices. Uh, typically, you have one system managing your PC estate. The, the majority of all in this room, I'm sure, have mostly Windows-based machines in their networks. And then potentially you have another system to manage your uh, mobile devices. You have a third managing if you have any Mac devices in your uh, environment. On the other side, we have the mobile cloud era. Uh, this is often, uh, it doesn't have to be, but often we categorize SaaS applications here. Uh, you do not rely so much on the location of the device in order to apply security and access policies. You are much more interested about the user itself uh, and if the device can be trusted. Uh, we have much more uh, scalability when it comes to management. We manage not individual devices, but policies. And these policies are applied to any of my platforms that I need to manage. The problem is most customers are finding themselves trying to navigate both architectures. They are in the middle of this uh, shift. So they are in the middle of the bridge. And that's where the vast majority of VMware end user computing products focus. We are not the, for the like Horizon for example. Horizon is not the, it's not the end of the road. Horizon will get you to a certain level on the bridge to the middle. It's a stepping stone in order for you to be able to free up resources and uh, time to invest and modernize the rest of your applications. It's not the end goal, end state. So we need something that can help the IT department to bridge this, but also for the end users. The end users needs to have one unified way to access their applications and data no matter if the application and data resides in our uh, legacy side of the house or if they are new, modernly architected. So that's my viewpoint of our value proposition, trying to help to bring these two worlds together because we will have a mixture of architectures for many, many, many years moving forward. Our portal, uh, which is a, a component of the Workspace ONE solution, um, it's the user front-end component is very much uh, VMware Identity Manager. 
uh, our VMware Identity Manager is, I would claim, the only portal that can bring this amount of different kind of application into one and the same umbrella. So in one portal, one location for the end users, you can get native mobile applications, both from uh, the app stores as well as your home built-in created applications. You can access modern web applications that supports modern federation by immediately, there is a, uh, quite a few free spaces in front here if you, if you dare. I did shower this morning so I shouldn't be too smelly. Uh, we could federate directly to us but in most cases we are coming in late to the game. You already have ADFS, Okta, Ping or CA SiteMind or whatever. We can play together with it still presenting the application and provide value seamlessly access for the end users even though you may have existing identity providers. Um, because we are not telling the story of rip and replace because the, you have spent enormous time and money to, to incorporate this. And then of course we can support the legacy web applications often based on header based authentication or Kerberos. So we need to bridge over that. We can solve that with our solution. And then the virtual apps such as Citrix published apps as well as our own solution Horizon. Windows application natively installed or we can virtualize the application and, and uh, push it out as a thin app container. And of course Mac OS applications. We are if not the only at least there is very few that can handle all these. Of course all customers don't most likely do not have everything there. But it provides with you with a certain degree of flexibility at least. If you're not sure what you will have to support tomorrow, it's good to have something like this in place because now you can serve future uh, solutions. But it's not only getting access to it from a where do I find the actual application itself. VMware did a survey regarding access management, identity management and asked our customers where is your biggest pain point. Password management was one of them. Internally at VMware, we implemented Workspace ONE for three years ago, I think. We did a calculation of the ROI, the return of investment. On average, every year, every employee had 10 password uh, reset uh, tickets. We lowered it down when we published it to four or five. Each one of those tickets cost on average $15 and we are 25,000 employees. So very soon you have a cost just by managing passwords well over one million dollar. And the cost of implementing something like this is not that far away. So um, it, it could, password management alone could be uh, an interesting angle why you would look at this. But of course many customers are uh, struggling with external users. I would be honest with you, we are not the best solution in the world to handle purely external users. We are much more focused on the corporate uh, users. We can to a certain degree manage external users but do remember we have a great partnership with Okta and they are excellent at as handling uh, external users. So that could be a, an interesting angle. Passwords. Passwords is something that is um, unfortunately used still today. You would think that the, the um, technology have moved forward but still you will see a lot of internally developed applications, sometimes purely external systems still requiring the user uh, to enter passwords. I was told by one customer and I'm actually lowering the amount of prompts so you don't, so you still believe me but they told me they have on a monthly basis one a monthly occurring process that required the user to enter five different passwords. It was actually more. But let's just imagine the struggle for the end users to type these passwords all together. Completely unnecessary. We have plenty of systems that can deal with it. We have plenty of seats free in front here. Uh, I won't tell the same joke I told previously. It gets boring. So, 
most of you here might not be natively English speaking. I'm certainly not. This is the, my original Swinglish you're listening to. I stole this slide from a previous slide, but I get the word fester. No SSO can fester in many ways. Fester simply means stinky, it's smelly. So don't offer, by not offering your end users a single sign-on experience, stinks, basically. Your users lose trust in the IT department. They get frustrated. They forget their password. They open support tickets. Uh, they reuse uh, passwords. And you all know nowadays most attacks are trying to retrieve the user's passwords. And they are most likely target targeting a system you are not involved in in any way. Their private Facebook account might be slightly hard to hack, but still uh, Sony uh, uh, network, play networks and such. The, the intruders are hacking those systems and then they know the user is most likely reusing their passwords in your systems. So it's very hard for an IT department to, to um, protect themselves from that. Uh, another area of interest is that I have uh, quite a few customers telling me that we have made this massive investment in modernizing and mobilizing this application, this business uh, line in bi of business application. But the user adaption is poor. We have almost no one is using it. And one of the big reasons is because you are prompting the user for AD credentials on a mobile phone, that is far from ideal. And then on top of that, you are prompting for a multi-factor authentication solution. So it takes 30 seconds to log into the darn application. I know we used to have it like that at VMware. So four years ago, we had a lot of mobile access to our applications, but I never used them because I was prompted for password, multi-factor, RSA secure ID and such. Three years ago, we implemented Workspace ONE. Now I use mostly my iPhone to do business. I have mobile native applications where I do most of my reporting and expenses and such. Uh, at least, takeaway for you who didn't know, Fester, stinker, a new English word. At least it was new to me. So, if I could tell you, I can bring your end users this kind of experience. They unlock their device using a pin code, thumbprint, that is all depending on your policies. And then they have access to the application. Nothing more, nothing less. If you haven't seen our mobile SSO, I just wanted to show you a demo. And this was recorded on my iPhone accessing our OneDrive. No editing, so the time delays are the truth. Um, so I was in Sweden through my home network to our implementation that is hosted in US to Office 365. Um, and this is the user experience. Of course, I have used OneDrive before, but I logged out from it. So I was basically a new user uh, trying to launch OneDrive. And this is the experience. I click on OneDrive. I enter my email address. This is for the tenant discovery in Office 365. I need to indicate, is this a private or business uh, OneDrive? I'm done. That's it. That's the only thing I have to do. Now we are authenticating user our, using our mobile SSO functionality, and we are chaining it together with device compliance. So we're reaching out to AirWatch in the back end to see is this device still compliant. Now we have authenticated. Now I'm waiting on the OAuth 2 tokens from Office 365 to be pulled down to the device. And there you go. This is the kind of user experience you should aim for, at least in my opinion. Your end users will not be bothered at all. And for you who know your, your uh, federation and, and access management, in the background now, my OneDrive received all of two tokens. And they have a certain time to live. Typically, it's quite long could be up to uh, uh, 90 days, sometimes longer, sometimes shorter. You can specify this in most uh, applications. The problem is you cannot pull it down to two days because your end users will be furious having to type in their email address, their, their um, what is it called, uh, uh, password, MFA and such every day. 
But with this seamless kind of authentication, you could think about, I'm not saying you should, but it could be of much more interest to lower the time to live on your OAuth 2 tokens. So, we have a couple of protocols that is excellent in, in order to provide uh, seamless uh, authentication in a secured fashion. We have the three-headed dog. I think it, it, it Kerberos. Uh, it was protecting some kind of cave in the Greek mythology, I think. But Kerberos and certificates, that is typically what we use. No, Kerberos is not invented by Microsoft. It's invented by MIT professors to solve MIT internal authentication issues. It's completely open, open standard. And then uh, Microsoft have, have tuned it a little bit for their Active Directory, yes. But Kerberos has been around for ages on Mac OS, on iOS, and on many other systems. Uh, but it's an excellent protocol in order to, to uh, provide uh, seamless authentication. But certificate is probably the most common one. The, the benefit with the certificate is you can, you can uh, deliver both the user information, but also information about the device itself in, in one go, which is excellent and what we make use of. So this is another very common slide I, I, uh, when I position uh, Identity Manager slash Workspace ONE. What, what can we achieve? So imagine you have authenticated into the portal one way or another. We can uh, uh, transfer the user into another system using any of these protocols. SAML being one of the uh, uh, de facto standards in the enterprises today when it comes to federation. Open standard still. WS uh, was a Microsoft and IBM invention, uh, but uh, mostly used for Office 365 uh, uh, today. Uh, Open ID Connect. And then OAuth 2, of course, it's not really an authentication mechanism. It's more of a uh, delegation of access. But we certainly support OAuth 2. And as a developer, you can have a look at how we may simplify your OAuth 2 implementation for your homemade uh, applications. We do support Kerberos and header-based because we need to be that bridge between the old systems and the new system and provide a single sign-on experience. Inbound into Identity Manager, we support a wide range of different authentication methods. Of course, we do support username and password, even though I strongly recommend you not to use it. You should use any uh, seamless uh, authentication method like our iOS Kerberos. It's a completely different Kerberos implementation than your Active Directory. But that is our mobile SSO functionality on iOS. It's based on Kerberos. We have certificates, a couple different methods. We can rely on a third party, so we can uh, trust a SAML assertion and then pass the user forward. So, with all that, what we claim to provide with the seamless functionality is the goal to achieve consumer simplicity. What we mean with that is, if you look at Facebook, Twitter, and all the popular uh, consumer style applications, you are never prompted for, for authentication. You're prompted once when you sign up, but that's it. If you would be Facebook and you would prompt the users every time uh, for a password, there would not be any status updates, I guarantee you. People are way too lazy. Um, so we want to mimic that functionality as much as possible, but we just cannot have a never-ending token for access. We need to still apply conditional access and such, but we are mimicking the consumer simplicity while maintaining enterprise secure. And it's important to have consistent user experience across all your platforms. So on my iOS, it looks the same as on my Mac, and it looks the same on my VDI Windows desktop as well. And if I would have an Android, it would look the same and act the same as well, which is super critical when you try to introduce something uh, to, eat, to create simplicity for the end users. They should not have to learn different behavior and look and feel just because you happen to access it using a different uh, platform. 
And of course, we have a generic web view as well. So you can use any web-enabled device to access it. I've, been, I've seen pictures of people in Teslas logging into this platform and launching resources. Uh, very useful, most likely not, but still a funny thing. Uh, it shows the, we, we can support any device. And for you who have been looking into this solution, uh, before you get it 100% seamless to your end users, there is a couple of checkboxes you need to be aware of. Uh, but it's all customizable. You can achieve a true seamless experience where the user is not prompted for anything as long as they are enrolled uh, so we know about the device so we can present something to the system. This slide deck will be shared with all of you. So if you, I, I see everyone is taking pictures, not of me, <laughs> uh, surprisingly. I can, I can strike a pose. Pretty decent post. No. Um, there is open standards that you should look out for. Any new uh, application that you onboard or bring into your organization, if, if it was up to me, I would demand SAML or OpenID Connect support. And o uh, OAuth 2 often comes uh, um, as a side effect uh, by this. All these protocols are excellent. The most important thing is they are open standards. So if you start by implementing Identity Manager and Workspace ONE, and you integrate and federate using SAML, and then all of a sudden something else comes around from another vendor, much better user experience, you like it much better, fine. All your systems are based on open standards, you can rip and replace it. So you are not finding yourself in a lock-in where you are many times today based on a Kerberos single sign-on experience for internal users. The other downside with having too much tie-in with the Active Directory Kerberos is the fact that it doesn't translate very well to mobile devices. It's extremely hard to provide a good user experience when your system is requiring a Kerberos authentication. Much, much easier if it's based on SAML. I'm not saying you should rip and replace Active Directory. It's still a great user store. Keep it if you want, but don't rely on your single sign-on uh, for it. So if we now present this seamless authentication, you may say, well, there is a couple of applications that is extra uh, security concern of mine. So if you get seamless access into the portal, of course we should have a step up authentication method, a multi-factor authentication that goes hand in hand with the seamless user experience. And there is a couple out there. We offer one included in the product called VMware Verify. But you can integrate with any multi-factor solution. But whatever you do, make sure the user experience is still top of mind. Our solution looks something like this. So I logged in seamlessly. I click on Workday. There is an access policy dictating that, sorry, Workday requires you to use multi-factor. So now, in this case, we're using the uh, smartwatch uh, integration, but you get a push notification to your smartphone. Uh, or you can get the text message, but most, in order to provide the best user experience, you basically get a push notification, was this you trying to access Workday? Yes. And that's it. That is fairly good uh, user experience in my opinion. But we do need to access application data as well. And we have for a while now with our Boxer uh, email client uh, supported something referred to as flows, which means we have connectors that can tie into your business applications, which allows you to, within an email, within your email client, interact with the data in, in the system. As an example, if you are using Jira and you get a new ticket created, assigned to you, you can uh, do actions on that ticket without launching Jira. So you could, for example, use gestures to reassign it to someone else or approve it or whatever it may be. 
So we have a couple of pre-created uh, connectors, but we also have open source the connectors. So you can build your own connectors in a very simple fashion. And we will in the future, at least we're thinking about it, bringing this to our Workspace ONE uh, application as well, which you will soon learn is to be referred as the intelligence hub uh, uh, very soon. Uh, which means the portal where you access all your applications can interact with the data of at least a few of your applications. Which means your end users is not even launching the application and can still be productive. That might be um, of interest if you start to think about it. Uh, because now you're not even forcing your end users to launch the application. Um, so what we've been building is this platform that we refer to, the, the Workspace ONE platform. It started out with identity as one of the cornerstones, that is identity manager. And then we had the context with AirWatch functionality. It's now referred to as UEM. So we could manage the device, we knew about the device, and we knew about the user. But we need to bring it to the next level. And that's where I'm sure many of you will hear over and over this week, and I have a session on Thursday on the intelligence. We are adding intelligence to this workspace as well. So it's not only can the user authenticate correctly, can we do it in a seamless fashion, is the device to be trusted? Is the device at the correct patch level and such? We also add intelligence where we can learn about user behavior. And if something changes, we can make an automated decision or task. So we can automatically, without any interference or involvement or by IT personnel, unenroll the device, or we can send an email to his manager and say, hey, by the way, this user is using extensive data uh, uh, plan or whatever it may be. All the data we get fed into the intelligence, we can act upon and, and do automation. So previously I talked mostly about the user experience. This will start to help the IT department quite a lot because you can uh, automate uh, actions. So I mentioned we are renaming, so we are always renaming. Uh, that's one of the workspace, identity manager, that, that's its third name. It used to be called application manager, workspace portal, now it's identity manager. And the, the platform is workspace one. So today we have the workspace one client or application. Here the end users can uh, access all their applications uh, and they get uh, SSO, seamless access. So it's very focused on the end user experience. And then we have the AirWatch agent. The AirWatch agent is very much focused on the IT department, making sure they can uh, enforce policies on your device and get retrieve uh, uh, status updates from the uh, device. What we, and yeah, sorry. Um, uh, there is, it's not single sign-on, but there is functionality when you use the agent where we can reuse the user's password. So for those really legacy applications, there is alternatives to changing the architecture or adding reverse proxies in between. We could, to a certain degree, offer single sign-on to legacy applications as well. The problem is we have like quite a few ways of, of of solving different authentication and access problems. So everything has to be discussed and looked at in, in the broader scope of things. But the agent, together with other SDK-enabled application, can share that information. Uh, sorry, uh, I missed, uh, that was the first pitch for this slide. But now we are renaming these two. So we are bringing the AirWatch agent and Workspace ONE, and we're bringing you the Workspace ONE Intelligent Hub, <laughs> Intelligence Hub. You may or may not like the, the, the name, that's up to you. But just so you are aware, we are upgrading, in place upgrading the agent. Some of you may already have realized the agent icon changes and looks like this now. So the hub moving forward, it replaces the agent straight away 
all functionality of the agent, everything. And then in the future, we will add the Workspace ONE app functionality to the hub. And to a certain degree, we already have done it. Uh, so I'm using the hub, for example. I'm not using the Workspace ONE app today to access my applications. So just to paint a picture over um, perhaps uh, over uh, uh, explaining it a little bit. But we are bringing these two functionalities together. So where the agent has been very much IT focused, the uh, Workspace ONE app and user experience focused, we're bringing it all together in one single app. Hopefully that uh, will be a positive thing for all customers. So I talked about authentication, accessing data without actually launching the application, which might be a slightly new to, to many people, the whole concept, so it needs to sink in a little bit. Uh, but then, of course, we need to have access policies around it. Um, I won't go into any great depth of access policies, but just to paint the picture what is possible. For example, we could have a device that is managed from a trusted location, they get straight away access to their applications. But let's say the same managed application, but it's now on an untrusted, in an untrusted country or location, then we can force for a multi-factor authentication on top of the seamless authentication. And then lastly, of course, if it's jailbroken, or we don't trust the device at all, we simply block access. Many customers is looking for this, especially when it comes to Office 365. Office 365 has been hugely successful, I would say, if you take into account uh, customer adopting it uh, point of view. Most of our uh, projects nowadays involve Office 365 one way or another. So we need to make sure that we add value on top of the Office 365 um, uh, story. So one of them is our seamless authentication for mobile devices, as well as access policies around mobile devices. Um, so if many customers is looking for simply denying untrusted, unmanaged devices access and providing access to corporate owned devices. And then you have this hybrid uh, that you could bring your own device and such, but we can all help you out solve that conditional access requirements. Uh, repeating myself, but just to wrap it up, authentication with the, my thumbprint. I have access to most of my enterprise applications with a thumbprint. Here and there, we do require an evaluation or uh, to uh, elevate your privileges. So I use a multi-factor, but then I only click approve. It's super user uh, friendly and easy. And then, of course, we have this notion. Um, it depends if you buy the devices and hand out, out to your employees or you have some kind of BYOD uh, initiative. But um, sometimes there is a, a fear for the uh, uh, end users to actually enroll into management. And we make sure that within our product we have we display this is what the IT department can do. This is what the IT department actually can see. This is the benefits you will get by enrolling. Uh, so if you're not enrolling, we, you may still have access, but you have this password and MFA uh, token that you need to use, for example. Uh, but the end users can rest assured that they can read what is actually being pulled from my device. No, I cannot see location. No, I cannot see your private uh, photos. And I cannot wipe them and things like that. Um, so this mobile SSO that I, that I showed you, the only way to, that I know of to try to explain it in a way that people start to believe that it's actually possible. And the most important thing, we can do this seamless kind of authentication on almost, I would say all applications without using SDK or any kind of wrapping as long as the backend can be federated. There is one or two exceptions, but in the general scope of things, that is a true statement. So how is that possible? 
how can we take an application that cannot handle the seamless mobile SSO that we have invented and still apply it in, in the flow of authentication. So this is a slightly technical uh, slide but I think it, it might be valuable to share um, because it, it explains how this is possible. So this takes the iOS method uh, and then I'll go through how we solve the same thing on Android. First of all, the iOS mobile SSO functionality is based on the protocol Kerberos, but it has nothing to do with your Active Directory Kerberos. It's a completely different realm. Here, I hope you can uh, read the text, but here basically the user has enrolled into AirWatch, which means now the device has the policies applied to it. It has certificates and such that it will use later on for mobile SSO. Now the user launch, in this case Salesforce, but it could be any application. The most important thing is this Salesforce application has not been wrapped, not using AirWatch SDK in any way. This is just a vanilla version downloaded from the App Store. And then this application is launched, it reaches out to the backend, in this case Salesforce, and the backend is federated to us or via another IDP. You could have here in the middle, now the, I cannot see where I am. Before we reach Salesforce, perhaps we have Okta there in the middle. It will work just as, as well. Uh, this is standard SAML federation integration. So Salesforce is redirecting the client application to the identity manager. And now our access policies kicks in. And we see it's an iOS device. I will prompt for mobile SSO for iOS. So we pass the user session over to our authentication adapter, which will send a Kerberos authentication challenge. This is where the secret source starts. iOS will intercept that traffic. iOS natively supports Kerberos. When it sees a Kerberos request, it will take it and perform or try to perform authentication. And in this case, it will use the certificate that we have already deployed with the enrollment of the device into AirWatch and perform a standard PK init uh, Kerberos authentication flow. So a Kerberos based on certificate authentication flow. If you notice, the Salesforce application is idling here. It's not even aware of this authentication process. And now the user is authenticated uh, and the user is passed back to Identity Manager. This is all happening internally between the IDM and the KDC adapter. And since the user is now authenticated, we generate the SAML assertion which we pass back to the client. So the client here was thinking of or ex expecting to get some kind of prompt or something, most likely using an embedded web browser, just standing there waiting and then all of a sudden it receives a SAML assertion. I said, well, I guess I already had a session with the IDP then. So it happily takes this SAML assertion and send over to, to the backend. And then of course you have OAuth 2 scope negotiations and things like that happening. This is the reason why I can stand up here and claim we have a universal support. No app wrapping, no special SDK. And we can provide a seamless authentication for the end user uh, as long as the backend can be federated. On Android, it's slightly different because we don't have Kerberos, universal Kerberos support on Android OSs. So we had to figure out what else could act as the iOS operating system, hooking the, the communication. We have our own tunnel client. We are not using, if you're aware of the AirWatch tunnel, uh, uh, we are not using the backend of the tunnel. We don't deploy any servers in this case. We only deploy the tunnel client on devices and configuring it so it can hook and, and uh, uh, intercept traffic uh, from the uh, application. So again, on Android, we don't need wrapping or special SDK. So when the application is trying to reach Salesforce, the tunnel client doesn't do anything. It just allows it to pass. But when Salesforce redirects to Identity Manager, the tunnel client will intercept and do stop. I should do a dance and say hammer, hammer time after that, but I decided not to do it now. I was close to do it, but I never did. Tun it intercepts, 
pauses the client, the application, na native application, and says, hang on. And then the tunnel client establishes a mutually authenticated tunnel and then resumes the application. So now the application is talking to identity manager. But what happened when we created this SSL tunnel was that a uh, management profile certificate here was uh, used to authenticate into this proxy service of identity manager. This is no AirWatch uh, server. When it did, it placed in a cache the user certificate. So now the application hits identity manager. Identity manager will say, oh, you're an Android. Let's go to the Android mobile SSO adapter. And this adapter knows it can retrieve the user certificate from this cache. So it, ret it retrieves it. And then we check if the device is still compliant with AirWatch. If all is true, SAML assertion is sent to the, uh, to the client. The SSL tunnel is teared down. The cache is cleared. And the SAML assertion is passed to, to Salesforce. So we achieve the same user experience on Android. But since we don't have native support for it in the OS, we have to come up with something else. That's why we use the tunnel client. And then I would like to, to um, finish off with just uh, explaining a little bit about our partnership with Okta you may have heard of. We, I think we announced it during VMworld USA. So the thing is, Okta today is, I think it's considered one of the market leaders at least in, in uh, IAM, so identity and access management. Uh, it's excellent in managing user objects, excellent at handling federation and such. What Okta lacks is mobile functionality. We are excellent in uh, understanding the mobile devices. We can perform this mobile SSO. So it's more or less a perfect fit. So uh, let's see if I have... Yes, so this is how it would look like the flow from an end user's point of view. So I'm in front of my mobile device or, or my, my PC, and I try to reach against Salesforce. Sorry, we are reusing Salesforce constantly. Um, I believe one of the reasons is Salesforce has an excellent developer uh, strategy where you can sign up for a developer account that it never expires. It's just excellent service. And it's, it supports SAML very well, so we can play around with it. So, um, but any federated application will work, Office 365, Workday, whatever you may uh, think of. And then the component owning the federation is Okta. So the, the user will be redirected to Okta, and Okta nowadays have implemented uh, device awareness. So previously, they didn't have this functionality, but now they can see, oh, you're a PC, I will authenticate you automatically myself. Or it says, oh, you're a mobile device, let's send you over to Workspace ONE. And now the user hits Workspace ONE. These redirects happens within a second. So it's not like the user will be bothered in any way. It's very quick. And then Workspace ONE can make a decision. Should this user be prompted for, for a seamless authentication? Is the device trusted? And then we send an all OK. It's, it's a SAML assertion back to Okta, but we add extra information in it. In a SAML assertion, you can add whatever you want, more or less. It's a fairly wide and open standard, but especially the attributes and the method of authentication you can add more information about. So we can add more information about, yes, this device is, is managed, but not compliant, and things like that. So we can make decisions, and then Okta can act upon it. And then Okta decides, well, everything was okay, so it sends the user over in an authenticated fashion to, to Salesforce. And I slightly touched on intelligence, but from this point of view, we have the, the um, trust network we refer to it as. Um, uh, if you look at the security products a company uh, has deployed, on average, I think it's something like 10 to 20 different vendors and solutions. And the problem is they are all, most of them, best of breeds in what they do. So you cannot just 
replace them with one unified solution. But the problem is you as an IT uh, department, you have to go to all these different instances to try to figure out what is happening. And they are all on different consoles and such. There is no unified way for you to consume what is happening and get a report from all of these. That is what we are trying to create by partnering with a lot of market leader vendors and more and more is coming. And these will hook into intelligence through APIs so we can get the status report uh, into intelligence and then we add our own products like Identity Manager, AirWatch, Horizon data and we can use all this data to act upon. We can uh, search for, uh, for something that happens then do this. And, uh, so it's an if that then this kind of uh, engine uh, going on there. And then I just, uh, this is, if you haven't seen this, I just think it's a great graphic so I wanted to include it. It's absolutely marvelous where this is where most of uh, customers are uh, today trying to get hold of the shadow IT and everyone is running in different uh, direction. And then there is a transformation what I've been talking about here, implementing something like Workspace ONE, unifying the user experience, it won't happen over a weekend for sure. You, when we implemented at VMware, we started with two, three applications. Yes, the value for me as an end user was limited, but at least in order to get access to those applications, I knew where to go. And then slowly over the years, we build it up and now I think we have hundreds of applications available in the portal. And it's the only uh, where, uh, only place I go to access my, my corporate applications. Uh, don't forget to fill out your survey and please be gentle. It was my first session for, for this <laughs> VMworld. world. Uh, many thanks. We will take questions in 10 minutes. Uh, oh, during 10 minutes. We have 10 more minutes. I wanted to, to leave some room for questions. But I was told and since you stayed the whole session, that this information would be of interest to you, where to get lunch uh, after this. It uh, could be important. I've heard you, you need to make sure you're, you're energized, especially a week of this uh, at VMware. So with that, me, uh, uh, we take questions. We don't have a, a mic, so I will try to repeat the question for the sake of the recording. So if you have any questions, please raise your hand and we'll, we'll get on with it. Or well, it was crystal clear, no questions. Yes, please. Um, can you just uh, deploy Workspace ONE in a service provider so can you deploy Workplace ONE in a server provider environment? So you mean you are a service provider? You can host it. The problem is what you will get access to is not the multi-tenant version of uh, Identity Manager Workspace ONE. AirWatch is multi-tenant, yeah. but Identity Manager is not. But you can deploy it and it's uh, included in the service provider uh, SKU list. Um, in our cloud hosted version, it is multi-tenant, but that is because it's hosted in our cloud. So you have an option of reselling that offering or implementing individual VIDMs per user. Not a, a great answer, but an honest answer at least. More questions? I guess not. Well, you had your chance at least. Uh, thank you very much for attending this session. It has been a pleasure presenting to you. Hopefully you found nuggets of information there. Uh, I'll remain here for a couple of minutes if you want to have one-on-one questions. Again, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>